another whale tail outdoors how-to video. In this segment, we're going to teach you how to mount a European skull and how to restore bleached antlers. Today we're going to show you what to do with bleached antlers when you find them and how you can restore them to looking like a brand new brown shed that they just dropped this year. What you need to get started here is the three different paints. Uh, paints gray, we got burn umber and raw umber and you just need to go ahead and start light and work your way darker and I like having a good spray bottle. You can pick all this up at Hobby Lobby or any craft store and it's all acrylic paint so the nice thing about it is you can wet down a rag or a paper towel with the water and if you make a mistake or don't like what you're seeing you can go ahead and wipe it off. Um, you can also pick this up for about two bucks. I like using a little bit wider brush. We're working with a smaller deer here so I don't want to go too thick. And then individual paint trays and something to go ahead and wipe the brush onto to thin it down if you need to. So start with a little Payne's Gray. Don't need much at all. This guy has a little bit of darkness already to his antlers where his uh, old rub marks were. So we're just going to go ahead and start light, spray some water, I like to mix it real good, get some, some of the excess paint off there and I can just start super light. You always work your way up, because that's the darkest part of the antlers, the bases. So it's a little darker on the left side than I want it to be, so I just squirt a little water on here. I can just kind of rub it off. All right, now we're going to move on to the raw umber, which lays more of a reddish mark on there, reddish brown. Go ahead and do the same concept, water it down. Turn it around, start working the back side. It's always best, like I said before, to start light. You can work your way heavier. This will accomplish a more realistic look. All right, moving on to the raw umber. This is gonna be your darkest color. You don't need much of this, it goes a long ways. Just a little drop will do you. And I'd like to mix on the same palette or plate to bring the colors together. Just makes a more realistic look. You can just kind of see how I'm blending all these colors together. This is time consuming, but well worth it if you want a realistic looking mount. All right, just to 
applying the final touches, what I like doing is where you have your veiny areas where the veins ran through the antler before the velvet fell off, I like just doing some final brush marks on those with some darker brown and add some nice realism to it. Once you're pleased with the paint scheme, go ahead and let the antlers dry for an hour or so. Once dry, dab a rag in some lemon oil and apply a small amount to the antlers to give them a fresh look. I'm here at A-Frame Woodworking with Chet, and it looks like we're ready to mount this uh, deadhead up. Yeah, we got these plaques turned out for you guys this week. Uh, the deadhead looks really good with that paint scheme on there. So now I'll take you guys through how to assemble this. So if you're ready to get started, let's get this guy on board. Let's get going. Hey guys, if you ever order any of these backboards from me, they'll come disassembled. It's a really quick process of putting them together. You'll get three longer screws, some two-inch silver screws, and a gold deck screw, and I'll show you how all these go together. You want to start with your backboard first and take two of the longer screws and your centerpiece. The way I do my centerpiece is, uh, is really nice because you can make them so they can go on the wall or you can turn them around to put them on a table or a desk. For this one, we're going to put this one on the wall. So just start by putting the two screws in the back, get them lined up, and I put the point down. Just make sure they're lined up with your pilot holes. Run them into your center pieces. For the back one here, we're going to put this one in snug, and then the top piece, we're going to keep loose until we get the skull exactly where we want it. And that's your backboard. The next one we're going to do is we're going to take the front face plate, and we're going to keep this one loose because we want to have the ability to turn it. The gold keeper screw is going to keep it in place after we figure out where we want our skull to be and we'll also drill a hole for attaching the skull. Again, there's a pilot hole in your middle center piece there. Just go ahead and run that in. Keep it somewhat loose until we get everything drilled and we get that hole drilled, and then we'll go ahead and tighten that one up for the next back piece. So now we're ready to get the skull put on. All right, before we actually get the, uh, the skull on the mount, we want to make sure we reference where we're actually going to be drilling our mount to. So one of the best places to actually mount a European um, skull, on the back side if you look here, you can actually make a diagram, and I have a Sharpie here. I'm actually going to make a diagram with these four points on the bottom part of the skull itself, and I'm just going to find center, and this is where we're going to actually be pre-drilling to mount the skull on the base plate. So next we're going to go ahead and center the skull on the base plate and what I've done is I've actually mashed up the eye sockets with where the actual base plate has an hourglass look to it. I think that looks best for center right now. And once you have your mark on the bottom of the skull, you just can take your finger and put your finger down from that center point, take the skull off, and then we'll mark it again. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the skull while Chet marks it. And now we got our dot in there and we'll be able to drill. Now that we have our mark, uh, we just match up the bit size with whatever size bolt or toggle or screw you're going to use. And we'll explain that a little bit later on in the demo. And we'll just go ahead and pre-drill this into our top plate. And there we go. Alright, so we have a pilot hole drilled in the bottom of the skull itself. And we also have a pilot hole into the base mount. So now we're going to go ahead and just thread this up through the bottom and into the skull. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and just uh, center this again into our pre-drill holes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hold them out while Chet just goes ahead and threads the screw. Alright, so you want to just make sure that this thing is snug. You don't want to go too crazy and crack it. 
So now that we twist the, the front part back around, just give it a look to make sure it's straight because um, we have a little keeper screw. I use a quarter inch, you'll get a quarter inch deck screw with your, with your kit and just make sure it's exactly where you want it. And then if you turn it all the way around to the front, in the front of my center pieces I've pre-drilled for you. Uh, it's not pre-drilled into the top plate, but it's pre-drilled here in the center piece. And you can just take this quarter inch, inch and a quarter screw. And I just use a Phillips. It's not going to grab much of that, but what it's going to do is it's going to keep it from spinning. And just sink that in. And there you go. Mounts ready for the wall. If you found this video informative, make sure you hit the like button on YouTube. Thanks for watching.